but I'm ready. Let's go. All you right, so, so welcome. You look so pretty. Oh, thank you. You do too. <laughs> no, you look really pretty. Thanks. I had a friend do all this. Like, I would have managed to do that. <laughs> Good job. <laughs> You're the professional, so... <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's a big compliment you know getting it from you you're, you're the expert you know no, your eyebrows and your lipstick is that like let me see is it like either black or like a dark blue it's i think it's green actually it's green. okay <laughs> pretty pretty oh you both look beautiful thank you I was rushing <gasps> <laughs> i'm so bad at the area oh my gosh is that so close yeah. And I was sweating a bit, but we're here. We made it. We made it. So, um, okay. I need you to present yourself. Tell us your story. Give us all the background. Like, <laughs> <laughs> my name is Quinesha Lachey Russell. Um, on my social media, I am LaQuinn. LaQuinn. I founded that name back in 2015 um, when I created my Instagram. I was like, "Ooh, I want a really cool name," and I thought oh, should I combine my first name and my middle name? And that's how I got them. Um, okay, you know that. Yeah, I'm 29. I live in Maryland, but I'm actually from South Carolina, North Carolina area. Um, I'm four foot 10. I was born in September, so I'm 29. All right. I am the oldest of two boys and four girls, so. I'm the oldest. There's a lot of you. Yeah. Um, <laughs> what else? I'm a YouTuber. Yes, yes. We need to talk about that yeah. later on. But you yeah. know what? I also created another channel on YouTube. I created like a ministry channel. So I just filmed two videos last night for that and mm -hmm. edit those videos and upload those videos. So I'm really busy now. Really busy. <laughs> that's that, that's good though. That's yeah. uh, most people are like bored this time with uh with COVID and all that. So so that's that's good. Uh, all right. So what's your story? What are we gonna talk about today? Oh, I'm a quadruple amputee. Uh, would you like to explain that? Because I mean, I didn't even know it before. Like we spoke, what that means as a word. Yeah. So quadruple. So quad. Let's break it down. So quad is four. And then the drupal part is, you know, like when you see like women that are pregnant, they have triplets, they have quadruples. It just means four. And then the amputation, mm -hmm. um, it just depends on what type of amputation you may have. So I am a, hopefully this is not confusing. I'm a double bilateral BK below the mm -hmm. knee and yeah. then I'm, uh, above <laughs> fingers. <laughs> Yeah. Um, so the left hand, of course, I have like my hand, my knuckles, and then on mm -hmm. the right, I have two knuckles. I lost knuckles four and five, mm -hmm. and fingers. And I tried to do some research on my prosthetic legs. These are the Pro Flex. Um, hopefully, you guys can see this. This is the Pro Flex split. So, but yes. Don't don't mind my feet, y'all. I need to. Do it. It's just kind of cracked and lazy. Um. Yeah. So this is the Pro Flex split, and pretty much it mimics a real foot. So like, mm. if you can imagine, well, it's natural for you because you have your feet. So like, when you're walking, you don't realize that you're actually walking heel to toe. That's how you should walk. Yes. So it makes a real foot. So you walk from the heel to the front, and that's how you. It's kind of like, have you ever been on like a trampoline? Yes. That's what it feels like sometimes, like air, like I'm bouncing. Mm -hmm. Um. So yeah, I'm a BK, which means that I am sorry that I am below the knee. Mm -hmm. and I actually don't even realize half the time that I'm amputated because I don't think about it um, unless someone says, oh, you're an amputee. And I'm like, oh, yeah, I am an amputee because <laughs> I don't I don't think about it. It's not something that 
I wake up and I'm like, oh, I'm an amputee. Like, feel sorry for me. No, don't feel sorry for me. I don't want anyone feeling sorry for me. Yes, um, I died back in November 1st, 2019. Now, legally, can't really get into the discussion of what led to it. Mm -hmm. um, will say is, I do have a lawyer and um, we're going to work that situation out. Um, I've been an amputee, so my legs were amputated back in December mm -hmm. of 2019, and mm -hmm. then my fingers were amputated January 2020, and then I got home um, from rehab March 5th, 2020, so it's actually been yesterday, no, today's Sunday, so Friday made it a year of me being back home. And my um, right vocal cord is paralyzed. Mm. That became paralyzed due to when they incubated me. I was in a coma for 15 days. So using my left vocal cord to talk, mm -hmm. um, which is why it's raspy. Because it's like, this cord is like flappy. So it can't stay up. Um, is that something that they can, because I don't have any idea, obviously, about so many details like is it is that something that they can fix yes they can fix it but we're in covid so okay it's too much of a risk right now to try to set up surgery because i don't want to be um what's the word cross contamination yeah 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 so you don't want you don't want to put yourself in any risk at the time yeah so i'm literally home um every day like, the only time I really go out is when I have to go to see, like, my rheumatologist. Um, due to all of everything that happened in my genetic, like, my family tree on my biological father's side, um, don't know him, but someone on that side of the family has lupus. So mm -hmm. um, when I went through the traumatic issues with my body, it was suppressed, and then it wasn't suppressed anymore. So I go to the rheumatologist um, like once every three months. So I just went, so I'll go back in May and then um, my prosthetics, I go like every three months now. So I'm pretty much home. Um, but that is a question that I did ask my primary care doctor and she recommended that I not go through with it right now. Mm -hmm. Because, you know, being around doctors and the hospital is just too risky right now for what I'm going through. Um, that would probably make my lupus inflamed mm -hmm. and then be admitted to the hospital. And I don't want to go through that. So mm -hmm. too much of a risk. Um, so like, how, what was your first reaction when all this uh, went down? Like, I mean, I'm sure it was a shock for you. I, look, when I woke up, I was in a coma, had a tube in my throat. And mind you, I'm thinking like, I'm still at my parents' house. Like when I, cause I went to my parents' house when I wasn't, when I was visiting them. And um, when I woke up, I was like, I'm at a hospital. And I'm thinking, mm -hmm. wait, I'm at a hospital. And then I look and I see my parents and I'm like, oh, she's awake. And I'm like, confused. I'm like, mm -hmm. Um, so I was, at, I was at a hospital in D.C. And, you know, throughout the process, um, my doctor had told my parents, like, yeah, um, we need to amputate our toes. And I was like, okay, all right, I could do that. As long as I can keep feet, you can take the toes, whatever. Because they have prosthetics that you can put on the feet. Yes, 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 I know. So I was like, okay, cool. I'm not worried about it. Then he comes back and says, we need to amputee to feet, her feet. And I was like, wait, you just set my toes. Like, now you're saying my feet. Like, wait, come on. Wait a second. Wait a second. Yeah. Um, my, my mom reacted worse than I did. Um, she kind of, like, broke down and cried. And I kind of looked at them, and I was just like, ooh. I wonder how they feel right now. Like, their daughter is literally fighting for her life due to the hospital m medical malpractice. That's what that's what led to all of what I'm going through is medical malpractice. That's pretty much the easiest way I can put it. Um, mm -hmm. Throughout the process, I really, I don't know, I'm different than other people. It just, I didn't care. Mm -hmm. It's like, I really just didn't care. 
um, because I have a testimony about when I actually died and I'll be uploading that video on my ministry channel. I actually went to hell. So when I came back, it was kind of like, well, I don't care what I lose. As long as I have my life and I can, you know, get more focused and re rededicate my everyday life to God, I really don't care. And I, I've maintained that same mindset since December 2019. Now, when they amputated my fingers, um, I actually have a video on my phone of what my fingers looked like. Imagine, um, let's see. So you see this black book, right? The, the black color of this book. That's exactly what my fingers looked like. It was black. And my fingers were black. And then they were like, have you ever seen anyone with like arthritis in their fingers? And their fingers are like bent? Yes. So like bend your fingers right now. Bend them like that? That's exactly what my hand looked like. Yeah. So it looks like that. And you couldn't move it. Oh, no. It was dead. The fingers were like dead. To the point where if, even if I didn't have surgery, they would eventually have fallen off. Okay. <laughs> yeah, that's, it's just like, they would have come off. Um, but the reason why this hand is, the right hand is different than the left hand, mm -hmm. is um, the longer, the re okay, so my surgery didn't happen like right away. I was in the ICU for 32 days. Mm -hmm. I wasn't allowed to eat for 25 days. I was on a feeding tube, and it was disgusting. Mm. I think that was like the worst. I think the, the the feeding tube was like the worst thing out of me losing my limbs. Because imagine having a tube in your throat, and, and it's just nasty. It's like, yes. it's like baby food. It's just disgusting. Mm -hmm. and it's funny. Throughout the whole process, it kind of, I was just like, well, I'm not bothered. I mean, I could be paralyzed and still have my limbs. You know, I'm able to walk and cook and clean and care for myself. Like, I'm still a functioning adult. Um, I don't know, like. I don't think everyone sees it that way. Like, even, <laughs> even when we spoke, you know, before the live, like getting to meet each other, like on FaceTime and stuff, you were like showing me everything. Like, oh, I could change a lamp. I can like put my watch on or like, <laughs> You do all this makeup, like this amazing makeup by yourself. I did my hair wrap not too long ago. And I was like, mm, I think I need to get a little cute for this interview because I look kind of crazy right now. <laughs> <laughs> and um, yeah, like I even put up my, this is my backdrop for um, my YouTube and put together my ring light. I don't, I don't really get any help. I, I don't know, I don't know. Yeah, but the thing is that another person wouldn't like be like that like you need to give yourself like a katarina said you're so beautiful and strong i will agree with her Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. uh yes like another person like might have fallen like in depression or like just sit let other people take care of them um you know have their family or a carer over like doing everything for them and you are here got your own YouTube channel, doing your makeup tutorials, and like doing everything by yourself. And you're just like, well, yeah, this is normal. Like, come on. Like, okay, if I was born this way, um, I think I would have a different mindset because before my amputations, you know, I was working, um, oops, I was working full time um, at MedStar. Um, a little background, I was an athlete, so I was able to do things, thankfully, before this happened. Like, I was on a dance team, um, varsity tennis, so I, I got to experience things that I probably wouldn't have if I had been amputated a long time ago, if I was born this way. So I think that's why I'm kind of like, eh, I mean, I got to do everything I wanted to do. Um, so it's like, whatever, doesn't really bother me. And I think it's funny when I'm out in public, people think that they have to like help me. And I'm like, stop, don't do that. You're making me feel like an amputee. Don't lend out a hand. I don't need one at my own. I just don't have fingers. Like, I don't need your help unless I ask for it. Don't help me. Anyone out there, if you see someone with a disability, 
do not help them unless they ask for your help. And I say that because you make us feel disabled. Mm -hmm. I was at a room with this, um, a totally different room, uh, doctor. Mm -hmm. And this was back in, oh, I got home in March. So mm -hmm. it probably has to be April, around April. And um, I went to this rheumatologist in, I think it was Largo or Landover, one of those areas, right? And um, rheumatologist is pretty much for lupus, if people don't know what that is. Lupus is like an inflammatory disease that mm -hmm. kind of can attack your body. Thankfully, I'm in stage one and there's four stages. So um, she needed to look at my joints because someone with lupus, you tend to have like arthritis. Thankfully, I don't. Mm -hmm. I pray against that every day. I don't have any arthritis in my body, but she, you know, she looks at the elbows and she tried to like touch your joints and whatnot. So I'm going to take off, like I have a cardigan on and she's talking and she proceeds to try to touch me. And I was like, did I ask for help? What are you doing? Don't touch me. <laughs> don't touch me. And I kind of had an attitude because I was like, what are you doing? Like, I didn't ask for your help. And she was like, oh, I thought you thought. Thinking and asking is two different things. Mm -hmm. You can think what you want. Unless I say I need help, don't help me. So that, to me, is more offensive than anything. Mm -hmm. You can look at me all you want. I don't care. But to touch me, thinking that I need help and I don't. I mean, it takes me a little bit longer to do things, but I can do them. Like, I actually can do them. And I think maybe people are saying, oh, you're so strong. It's like, no, it's not that I'm strong. This is life. You adjust. Things happen. You adjust. It's not about being strong. We are humans. We adjust to our environment. We are adaptive creatures. That's what we do. So, oh, you're so strong. You're so powerful. I'm like, no. No, not really. <laughs> Not really. <laughs> well, that's I didn't lovely serve in the, to see it. I didn't serve in the military. I, I, I didn't put my life on the line trying to save someone else's life. That's powerful. I'm just a regular person. Like, I don't need y'all to be putting me on no pedestal. I'm just like everyone else. I just look different. And that's just pretty much how it is. I don't know. I just were have you, a, I don't care. Always, like, this confident. Like, were you... Like always, like this positive and like confident and like. I think me being bullied, I think me being bullied throughout my entire school career, from kindergarten up until high school, I dealt with so many things way worse than this. So mm -hmm. when this happened, I was just like, it's just another thing on my belt. Like, okay, I gained confidence um, probably when I was like twenty five. When I moved out on my own and felt like an adult, got into my career, um, that's when I can say my confidence really showed is because I began to really have a relationship with myself. I was able to really identify who I am as a woman, as a Black woman. And now being a Black woman as an amputee, that's a whole nother spectrum. Mm -hmm. And honestly, I think confidence really comes from understanding who you are as a person, no matter what other people think. You have to look in the mirror every day and say, am I okay with what I look like? And yeah, I am okay. And if I could have it any other way, um, if I could have my limbs back, of course, I would love that. But it doesn't change how I feel about myself. It may make the other person feel uncomfortable because people will say, I wish I had your confidence. And I'm like, I wish I had your fingers. Like. <laughs> Okay, <laughs> you can get confidence. <laughs> not hard. It's not hard. Look in the mirror every day and tell yourself that you're beautiful and that you love yourself. I love myself with and without makeup. I love myself with and without my fingers. Now, I do miss my toes because I used to paint my toes white, but I have fake feet now. Who can walk out in the snow with no shoes? I can't. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it's snowing. I don't have any shoes on. <laughs> oh, man. I just make fun of it. it. It's hilarious. It's hilarious. It's hilarious. Did you 
<laughs> that's a good one. I <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm just, I, I joke a lot about it because it's just funny. Like, it's funny. No, that's a lovely way to see it. Like, as I said to you, yes, you might think, oh, it's okay, it's fine. Like, <laughs> but. I do not. I put my note, you see my nose ring, right? Um, yeah. I took this. This is hilarious. I took this. Um, I had got this from like the Dollar Tree a few years ago and I found out that I still had it. So I was looking in the mirror. I was like, ooh, I wonder if I can get my nose ring back in. So it probably took me like 30 minutes and I was just like, and I put it in and I was like, that's what I'm talking about. That's what I'm talking about. Yeah. And then I'm walking around, right? And my mom was like, how did you get your nose ring back in? I was like, yeah, I did that. Didn't I? She was like, yeah, you did. <laughs> now, I don't, ever want you, I don't ever want to hear you say you can't do anything. I said, but I never say that. I never say I can't do anything. I can't. I, I never say I can't. Um, so, if anything, I would say overconfidence. What I would say is carefree. Mm. I go with the flow. Try not to. If I can't do something, I take a break. And I come back to it. And I said, okay, what can I do to get my head wrap on? This is like a head wrap. It's very long. And I'm like, you know, I want to So there's ways that I do things um, now without even thinking about it. When people see me do my makeup, I think it's hilarious when they watch my YouTube. And they're like, I can't even do that. And I have fingers. I'm like, well, did you try? <laughs> no, I I'm like, that's the problem. You didn't try. So... Yeah, well, that's my thing. Like, I don't do makeup. Like, but that's right, though, because I just, I just haven't tried. Like, that's the problem. You could do it. Look, yeah, you can do it. Good, but, yeah. Video through the DM, and I can show you how to do your eyebrows. So, <laughs> yeah, that's what we need to do. We need to do a live how to do makeup. Like, you would give yes. like, a thing. Do makeup with an MPT, and they'd be like, what? How does she do makeup? Just like that would be amazing. That's what we have to do. There you go. Boom. <laughs> That's what yes. our next life has to be. <laughs> yes. You would tell me everything that I need to buy and we'll have everything ready. Yes. <laughs> uh, Katerina said this. Sorry? Someone said, do you live on your own hmm. or with your family? I'm actually moving um, very soon. Um, when I was in hospital, I had an apartment. I had that apartment for about, what, two and a half years um, when everything started. And they were, ex okay, so when I was in the coma and I came out of the coma, they weren't expecting me to live. So it was kind of like, okay, if she dies, we need to make sure her stuff is taken care of. So, like, they took all of my stuff out of my apartment and moved it um, to storage. And um, trust me, I'm working on that. Okay. <laughs> I am working on that. Um, working on moving out. And the funny thing is, I'm also looking for a car. Now, unbeknownst to everyone else, because I don't have my real foot, when you're driving, your brain, okay, your brain is not connected to your feet anymore, right? Okay. So it's not connected, it's not connected to the fake leg. So it's not gonna say use your foot and press down. It doesn't, it doesn't work like that. It does okay. not work like that. I have to get hand tools. Um, put on the driver's side where I can um, use my hand to press the gas and like press the brakes. Mm -hmm. So I'm working on that. Right now. Yeah, I already have my eyes on another, on another car. <laughs> I'm excited. That's good. That's excited. Good. Yeah. I, I want to ask you now that you said about that. Like, does I mean, I'm guessing you're allowed to say that, but does the government help you a lot? Oh, like, I get a nice check. <laughs> <laughs> I get a real nice check. I'm like, you know, I don't care about my life. I'm getting money. <laughs> I think. Yeah, I mean, I don't need to know how much and stuff, but... Uh, um, oh. say, it's way more that... It's way more that I was making on my job. And I was making good money on my job. Um, and being that I'm an amputee and I'm a quad amputee, 
you get more money for that. Um, now, also with the lawsuit, when I look, okay, when I looked it up online, just to give you a random number, when I looked it up, the most, at most, at most that a person can get for a lawsuit is like $9 million. <laughs> okay. All right. <laughs> and you still asking me if I want my limbs? No, I want that money. <laughs> that's, not, that's one way to see it. <laughs> I, 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 money. Um, money doesn't bring you happiness. It does not. What it does for me is it allows me to invest in my businesses that I have started. It allows me to take time if I want to travel when all this COVID stuff goes away. I can go and do and still live life and not have a burden of I got to get bills paid and do this and do that. And that's the benefit of being a person with a disability. However, don't go chop your arm off because, yeah. The, yeah, don't maybe, do maybe don't do that. <laughs> yeah. yeah. No. What's, up, what's your YouTube? My YouTube channel is called It's La Quinn. I-T. Is it apostrophe S? Apostrophe? Yeah, I think. See, I'm, I'm not English. Uh, when, once we once we finish the live and I put I, I write the description of the live, I will put your yeah. YouTube channel underneath so anyone can go and, and check it out after. I just put it in the chat just mm -hmm. for but yeah, um um Would you, do, you want do you realize on top of that, uh, with the COVID stuff, they're sending, they've been sending out like stimulus checks. I still got stimulus checks. <laughs> so that's, okay. that's good that the government helps a lot because I wasn't sure because obviously I don't live in the US. So I don't know how yeah. that would work. Uh, but it's yeah. good that the government helps a lot in different ways. Exactly. You're technically considered as a person that is unemployed, but I have two businesses, but technically, if you look at it, I'm technically unemployed. Um, so that's why when this COVID stuff happened, I was actually like, why did I get a check in the mail? I'm like, what is this? And I was like, Donald Trump. I was like, oh, I got a stimulus check. And then I got one, so I got two. And then they recently sent out a um, Merlin Merlin release package mm -hmm. where if you go, they send you money so I'm the only family member in this household that got that check because it's for people that have like disabilities mm -hmm. um so that's something that I just found out about as well okay uh do you want to talk about a bit about your YouTube channel because we did mention it but like what did you do exactly? When did you start it? I'm going to go to it right now for you, actually. Because um, I started my YouTube way before I became an APT. So I started my YouTube two years ago. <clears throat> excuse me. On... Uh, June 27th, 2018 is when I started my YouTube. So my YouTube started way before all of this happened. Um, but when I was in rehab, um, I was talking to my occupational therapist. And we were sitting there and she was like, what are the hobbies that you like doing? I said, I really like doing makeup. Like, I like being expressive and creating like different makeup looks. I like dolling up. And she was like, okay, would you want to do a makeup video? So I actually did a makeup video while I was in rehab, just as a project. Um, and we watched it together and I thought it was hilarious because I had a buzz cut, like my hair is like an Afro now, but like I had a buzz cut, my scars were still like really fresh. And it was even funny when I looked at it because I was like, wow, like I've been through so much and the first thing I wanna do is makeup. When I got out of the hospital, my mom was like, where do you want to go? I said, take me to the beauty supply store. She was like, what? Take me to the beauty supply store. I went to the beauty supply store. 
and I bought more makeup and then I started doing um my makeup videos all over again. And it's actually really fun. For me, it's a form of therapy. Um mm -hmm. because going through something like this, the doctors would consider it consider it as a traumatic event. And um there are people that deal with depression and anxiety. I didn't necessarily deal with depression, but I did have like slight P PTSD mm -hmm. where I would hear the monitors when I was in the ICU. I didn't realize that the monitors that I was hooked up to, I was hooked up to 27 different machines, right? And then I had like this one and it had my vitals and stuff on it. And I didn't realize the next person in the next room, because I had like a suite, the person in the next room behind me, I don't know what was going on with her, but her machine kept beeping, but it was also on my screen. And it literally caused me to have anxiety because it was like, beep, 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 beep. And I'm looking like, hmm. that's not, I'm looking at my bottles right now. I'm fine. But I didn't, they didn't explain it to me. So like when I kept looking at the machine, the nurse was like, you can stop looking at it. And I'm like, but why is it like beeping? That's how low my voice was. Because um, having a tube in your throat, when the tube comes out, Technically, you don't have um, access to your vocal cord at that moment. So I was whispering like, good morning, how are you? And that was very stressful on my vocal cord. But that caused PTSD because um, she kept having rapid responses and it was freaking me out. So one day, you know, I'm in my room right now and I love watching TLC and I'm watching the show. And then all of a sudden, this show comes on and it's like somebody in the hospital, like ER stories. And the monitor on the TV started beeping. And I had like a flashback and I was like, ooh. So I don't watch shows like that anymore. Mm -hmm. I can't do it. Because it takes me back to that. And that was a that was a stressful moment because I didn't understand while the machines was beeping. It had nothing to do with me, but it felt like it did. I was on three days of dialysis. That is no joke. When I was on dialysis, um, pretty much what occurred, my blood started to poison itself and it started attacking my system. So they had, um, I don't know if you can see it, but I have like two scars right yes. there. Yes. Um, on the side of my neck, that's where they had a tube inserted, mm -hmm. um, where they would run the blood out through a machine and it would circle back. And I kid you not, when I worked at MedStar, my patients would tell me, um, I'm not excited about going to dialysis. It's just like, I don't like this. And I'm like, why? And they're like, because they get really weak and lightheaded. I didn't understand it until I went through it. I literally would pass out. Because literally, you're losing your blood. You pass out. And then it makes you, like, super tired. I would be, like, super tired. Like, when, and mind you, it was for three hours. So I'm sitting there, like, are we done yet? Like, are we done yet? Are we done? And the machine is, like, a really big machine. Um, what else did I have? I had respiratory treatments where... Um, because I was upside down for seven days, oh, I need to drink some water. I'm not through. Okay. I was upside down for um, seven days, so I ended up catching pneumonia. <clears throat> Excuse me for one moment. Because mm -hmm. when I talk for a long time, my vocal cord starts to like act. So because I was upside down for seven days, the reason why I was upside down is every time they tried to flip me over, the um, monitor screen for my vitals would go flat. Like, I literally was dead, of course. Um, so the machine is, like, keeping me alive, the life support machine. And when they tried to flip me, they didn't even get me all the way. They tried to do, like, like this. Mm -hmm. And my parents, they tried to turn me. I flatlined. So I was upside down, and that caused fluid to build up in my lungs. That's as if someone is in a lake or a pool and they're drowning. 
in mm -hmm. fluid. That's what happened. So I had to get like um, respiratory treatments and it smelled like rotten eggs. It smelled like rotten, egg, rotten eggs and it was on my nose. And um, the guy that was helping me, he looked like Superman, but like, I don't know, I was stripping. The medicine was stripping me, mm -hmm. but like he looked like a superhero character because he had like a chiseled face and like this nice like haircut and every time I saw him I would just be like oh not again <laughs> he'd be like hey Miss Russell I'm like hey <laughs> really I gotta go through this again I'm like you know it smells like rotten eggs he's like, I know I'm like then can you get a different flavor he said there is no flavor all right whatever whatever <laughs> like, I hate it okay. that's a weird like it smelled like rotten eggs <laughs> and it goes in your nose and it's like gassy and I'm just like ew ew <laughs> disgusting um, what I want to ask you that's because I, I don't know how it works like does the hospital make you uh, go through therapy like do they bring uh, you want me to be brutally honest with you <laughs> Girl. So before everything happened, I was probably a hundred pounds. And you know, when I died in a coma for 15 days, I was on a feeding tube. Mm -hmm. Then after I was out of the coma, I still was on a feeding tube for like a few days. And then it got to a point where they said, Okay, the feeding tube is gone, but you still can't eat for 25 more days. I was like, What? Mm -hmm. I lost weight. I got down to like 77 pounds. Mm -hmm. And my therapist, I had a physical therapist at the time. And, you know, once I got a little bit better, um, I started to see her while I was in the ICU. And one of the goals that she had for me was to roll over, like be able to roll from like either right to left or left to right, like mm -hmm. actually roll my body. And I kid you not, that was like the hardest thing I ever had to do. Because essentially you were dead and now you're trying to move a body that you're trying to get used to again. Um, there is a state of consciousness. There is a state of consciousness when you die. People don't understand that. When I died, I knew I died. And when I came back, it was hard for my brain to understand what was going on so it was like a disconnect so when i tried to move to the right my brain was like okay move but i wasn't moving and then it got to a point where they had like this um mat and they would literally push me like they would roll me and they would keep rolling me and they did that for like two weeks to try to build up my strength but i still was severely underweight 77 pounds just for me to sit up felt like lifting a thousand pounds. I'm exaggerating because that's how severe it was. Mm -hmm. um, I was extremely weak um, in the body. So I had physical therapy, you know, there. Then um, they moved me to the gen, well, it wasn't the general floor, but it's like a floor you go to once you get out of the ICU. And I had to clear on that floor. Clearance pretty much means you have to pass all of the medical tests to be able to move to the next floor. And once I left that floor, um, the two therapists I had was occupational and I had a, a physical therapist. Occupational is like home care type thing, mm -hmm. brushing your teeth, um, combing your hair, washing yourself. Like you're actually trying to teach someone how to do these things. Over mm -hmm. again. Mind you, I lost my limbs. So they're teaching me how to like eat with a fork um so like this little gadget right here of course i have a pencil in it um let me see i don't use this every day i can write without it mm -hmm. um, trying to open it Let 
I'm literally trying to use my thigh to, and this is the struggles that amputees go through, but you just have to have patience with yourself. Okay, so I got it. Um, so this is a universal cuff mm -hmm. that I use. Um, trying to get it really quick. Okay, so this is a cuff that I can use um, to write with, mm -hmm. but I don't, I don't always use it because I still can use regular uh, pens and pencils. I still can write. So that was one of the goals that they had for me was, you know, learning how to eat, um, teaching myself how to brush my teeth all over again. Mind you, 77 pounds, I'm weak just got out of the ICU, so I'm still, like, you know, acting like this and not really able to move. Now, once I got to the cardiatric unit, because um, of the heart attack, you know, they had to check my heart out and make sure everything was good with that, and then I moved to floor the fourth floor, and then that's when I was able to start doing things on my own, like washing myself by myself and, you know, just doing, like, home care. Uh, once I got out of that... I went to a rehabilitation in D.C. Uh, it was the National Rehabilitation Center um, that was in North Northwest D.C. Mm -hmm. and um, physically rehab. So like I would I would literally have a schedule from like eight thirty a.m. to like four o'clock p.m. Mm -hmm. and I would have different. I would work out like there's a physical gym, um, and it was hilarious. Because I want to go back to this. When I was in the regular hospital, literally the day after my surgery, I was already doing flips. I was doing cartwheels. Mind you, I don't have any legs. But I was doing back flips and cartwheels, and they was just like, what is she doing? Like, she just gets amputated. Why does she have this energy? You're asking oh. me like I, I don't know. <laughs> They're like, but you just had surgery. I'm like, I don't care. <laughs> I don't care. A weak-minded individual will stay in that same mindset. I'm not going to stop my life just because I'm amputated. So literally, after the surgery, it was no pain. Of course, like I had a cast. They had a um, cast on my legs, so they gave me like, staples mm -hmm. um, to like suture up the wound and everything. But I was doing cartwheels, back whips, push-ups, <laughs> and the lady was like, I got to get this on video because this is insane. I've never seen a picture. I'm just going to agree with Maria. She said, wow, so in impressive. Like, that's that's the reaction. I agree. Like, that's that's the word. <laughs> it is. I don't, like, I've never heard the story like yours. Yeah, um, my story is really different because it wasn't like I was in a car accident. It wasn't like um, I wasn't born like this. So it's not it's not something that I didn't even know about. I mean, of course, I worked in a hospital, so I, I'm aware of people with amputations, but I didn't see it then. Definitely didn't see it, excuse me, on social media. Um, didn't really see it on TV. So when I became an amputee, of course, when I'm in the hospital on the fourth floor, I wasn't aware that I was the only amputee on my floor. So when I'm about doing things, rolling myself in a wheelchair, they're just like, do you see that? And I'm like, see what? And they're like, you're in a wheelchair wheeling yourself? I'm like, am I not supposed to? And they're like, well, we're not, we're not used to that. And I'm like, well, what are you not used to? She said, we don't get amputees on this floor. And I'm like, oh, I get it. Okay. <laughs> they, they expect me to be a person with a depressed spirit, negative, moping, looking for pity. No, I don't feel sorry for me. So why should you feel sorry? I feel sorry that you feel sorry for me. Like. <laughs> literally 
you're wasting your time. Because when I go to bed, when I wake up, when I'm on my laptop, when I'm editing and doing videos, I don't think about my amputation. And it's hilarious when people see my YouTube. Who edits your videos? Who set up your equipment? Me. Do you think I have money like that to pay someone to come to my house and set up my equipment? And to edit my videos, you really think I have money like that? I have money, but I'm not spending money on having someone edit my videos. And I'm like, what brain are you using? <laughs> well, how do you do? Well, how do you text? What do you mean? How do I do that? I'm looking for my other phone because it's just hilarious when people see me doing things and they're like confused. I don't know where it is, but just imagine me using. Like, I still have technically some. Like, I don't know. People are just, people are weird. People are weird. So this is my other phone. So, like, if I want to text, I just touch the screen. How hard is that? <laughs> Goodness. Oh, I love that. that. I really Did you do. get, like, the reactions... Like, did you get, like, bad reactions from friends? Like, you were expecting them to... Like you said, a lot of people feel sorry for you. Did you get that from friends and family? Like, did they disappoint you in that way? Now, um, shout out to my cousin. Um, she, I don't know how, was able to get on, like, Facebook. Um, and... From what I understand is they was able to get on Facebook and get in contact with all of my close friends. And of course I was in a coma. So I was not aware that they were there at the time, but I had friends there. I had um, my immediate family. My brother came down from um, college. Um, I don't think my baby brother was there. I don't, I think my baby brother was at like a friend's house because he was too young at the time and that would be too traumatic. Um, he didn't even end up seeing me until halfway through my treatment. Mm -hmm. um, but from what my mom told me is, of course, everybody was in tears and crying and um, things like that. One of my really good friends, he um, was there with his girlfriend and they dropped what they were doing and they came um, but he was like, he calls me Shay because, you know, my middle name's Lachey. That's a nickname that he gave me. And he was like, he didn't ever want to see me like that again. And his girlfriend had told me that he uh, was crying because he just was like, I was just talking with her like not too long ago. And now she's dead. Now, they didn't understand that this wasn't due to my own. Uh, I didn't do this to myself it was done by a different medical facility um due to medical malpractice so they were like confused so when i was able to like privately begin to explain when i got home like when i completely came home from the hospital rehab i was able to tell you know certain friends like what happened they was just a lot of them were upset <laughs> they were upset because they were like oh wait so they did this to you and i'm like yeah so a lot of them, you know, got like really upset, pissed off. And I'm just like, I'm about to get money, y'all. Y'all don't even understand. Like, I'm not, I'm like, you're mad? You can be mad. All right. Money don't buy happiness. It sure don't. But it's going to get me a house. <laughs> it's going to get me a house. And my home that I'm, I'm going to do like a ranch style home where um, it's adaptive. So like my kitchen will be adaptive where um, I'll have a cutting board that I can like go like this and it'll be able to cut things. I've been designing like um, different hardware that I can use. I'm excited. I'm excited. But um, some of my friends, we did cry together. Um, one of my best friends, and I love them so dearly, her and her husband came to see me. And mind you, the tube was still in my throat. And I had recently woke up out of a coma. Um, so, of course, like, my eye view, it was very cloudy. And I'm thinking, I'm having the dream. 
and they were there and I was like I couldn't believe what I was seeing I was like is that my best friend and my eyes are like this and I'm like is, is that my best friend and her husband and when I came to I was like oh that is them and of course my mouth was like wide open and you know me and her are crying and me and him is crying and you know they were talking to me um and you know comforting me but I was really sad like when they <clears throat> when they left because I was like dang I'm stuck in here like mm. oh, those are the friendsgiving <laughs> they were having a friendsgiving that same week and I was like I want to go to the friendsgiving and it was hilarious when I told my friend that. She was like, girl, no. We will have another one. You can come back another time. Um, so I did get to miss out on, like, certain, like, activities and things like that with friends. Mm -hmm. um, the reaction from my friends, they were upset. Um, yeah, of course, they felt bad for me. But at the same time, they know me. And they understand I don't like using the word strong, but that's what they say to me often. Like, wow, you're so strong. You're so inspirational. And I'm just like, I'm I'm just being myself. Now with family, um, majority of my family does not know um, what exactly occurred. Now, they do know I was in a hospital, but they don't know exactly what happened. Um, who else was there? I think my dad's friends and my mom's friends was there. Oh, my, my godmother was there too. Mm -hmm. um, so I've been to her a lot since I've been home. And that's one thing I'll say is if you are, um, if you aren't talking to family and friends, I highly advise that you talk to them because you don't know when it'll be your last day. Like there's not many people that can die and come back. And now, you know, being back on this side or this side of life, uh, I make it apparent to, you know, still maintain um, communication with family and friends as often as I can. Um, I am an introvert, so I really don't like talking all the time, but I do make it a point to try to talk to them, if not every day or once a week or, you know, whatever I can do. Um, now, me, personally, my thoughts about it, I don't care. Mm. Like when I think about what happened to me, sometimes I have to remind myself, like, wow, like, you died. You really died. Wow. <laughs> like, I'm looking in the mirror, like, I'm standing in the mirror, like, yo, you really died. And I'm like, yeah, I did. And I'm literally talking to myself, like, that was pretty awesome. <laughs> sometimes it's just weird thinking about it. Like, when I put my legs on and when I get out of bed, I go back to wow, I couldn't I couldn't even roll over like a year ago. Mm -hmm. Yes. Taking a shower? I could barely wash my face. You know how hard it was for me to hold my arm up? Like I'm literally taking this arm to hold this arm so I can go like this. For me to pick up a bottle, it took like 10 minutes. So when people think about amputations, I'm not thinking about amputations. I'm thinking about physical strength in my body over anything. The ability to be able to walk back and forth, take my legs off, lay down, put my legs back on, get up, go to the bathroom, go downstairs. Like, I walk up and down the stairs, like, 16 stairs to walk down and walk up. And I do that, like, often. So my legs, my quads is, like, massive. <laughs> I have really strong legs. And it's hilarious because um, I was in physical therapy and one of the things that I really wanted to do and maintain was self-defense. Because you're an amputee, you are at a greater risk of um, being someone that could be a potential victim. You know, like a purse snatcher or someone tries to hurt you and you can't defend yourself. <laughs> I'm laughing because... I actually had to attack my therapist. <laughs> and you I had to her. attack your therapist. I had her in a deadlock with my legs, my thighs. And she was just like, okay, 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 okay. And I was like, don't try me. Don't try me. I still got it. Still got I don't know how to teach you that. Yeah, and I can still do like, I can ch choke someone. Um, I had to like pretend to choke and like, 
going like this, they couldn't undo my arms. So like, I'm gonna let people know, don't try me. If you see me out in public, <laughs> don't try me. I may look like I can't handle myself, best believe I can. I still do push-ups. I'm very strong and I'm like 130 now. Um, so I'm really surprised at how like physically strong I am. Like, it's crazy. Um, and that's one thing. Yeah. Go uh, how do you feel when you're in public? Like, you always get those people that will look like, you know, they will always find something to say. Like, when if anyone's in public, you get those people. Like, how do you feel about that? Because I'm sure there are looks, as you said. It's hilarious because even though we have on a mask, I still can tell that they're probably like, what in the world? I'm like, what? Huh? Oh, you never seen somebody wear amputation? And I had made a joke on um, the Beauty Mark community page. And I was like, one day I want to go into a store, a grocery store. I want to take my leg off and I have on jeans and I want to pull it down and I want to pretend to fall. I want to pretend that I fell. And uh, I think it's going to be hilarious. It's going to be funny to me. Because people, like, it's it's like I'm a zoo animal or something. Like, I have fingers. What's the big deal? But I guess for shock. Because people don't expect me to function as well as I am. And, of course, my doctors were definitely mind blown when I was writing. They had me sign some documents and they were trying to hand it to my mother. Mm -hmm. and, oops, excuse me. And my mom was like, she got it. You can give it to her. She, she got it. And he was like, oh, I apologize. I was like, yeah. And I was like, and they was like, did you see that? And it was like six of them. They were plastic surgeons. They wanted to do um, surgery on my hand. They wanted to create a slit um, between my thumb. Uh, like wait, between I think because we are on it for an hour, let me call you back because it's gonna shut us down so I don't interrupt you. Okay. okay. Yeah, so um, pretty much what occurred was they wanted to do plastic surgery um, between my thumb and my first finger. And they were telling me like the advantages of doing that. And I was like, no, I'm fine without that because my hand amputation was probably one of the hardest things I went through because there are so many nerves in the hand and mm -hmm. I literally cried my sleep a lot in January of 2020 because um, it was painful. I felt like my hands was like on fire. It felt itchy. Um, I don't know if you have any tattoos. Do you have any tattoos? Yes. So like, you know, the healing process of a, ha a tattoo for it to heal, sometimes it itches. Yes, I yeah. I don't have any tattoos, but my hand, you know, um, I don't know if you can see, like, the line right there, that line, that's where they, like, folded the skin. It hurts so bad. And then even on this hand, they took the skin from the back of this hand and they folded it over, like, right there. Mm -hmm. I don't know if you can kind of see yeah. that. Um, so my hands, I was always doing this. And one day, um, I was in therapy with my uh, physical therapist and my occupational therapist. And I screamed at the top of my lungs. I was like, ah! And everyone was like, oh my gosh, what's wrong? What happened? My hands, my hands. And my hands was like bloodshot, right? Both of my hands. And I was in agony. Um, it was an agony. I, I'd never want to go through that again. So when they tried to offer me that surgery, I said, no, thank you. And I was like, I can, I can show you that I can write perfectly fine without it. And um, I showed them. And for people that don't know, amputees still can write. I still can write as an amputee. So it's all about mind over matter. Um, it's not hard 
at all. Uh, that's very nice writing, by the way. <laughs> Everything is like so straight. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> I love writing. Uh, I saw Actually, at the... Sorry? I'm going to be working on a book very soon as well. Okay. Do you want to talk about that a bit? Like, um, what, are you, what are your goals? So the, book, the book is going to be based on my experiences um, with prior to what happened during the process and after, emotional, physically, uh, and spiritually, and mentally. I want to cover that aspect in the book. So um, I'm in the works of trying to figure out how to get my thoughts on paper, because I know what I want to talk about, but I want the audience when they read the book to be able to put themselves in the same perspective, even if they aren't an amputee, even if they aren't someone with a disability, adapting to a change in your life. Um, it's going to be like a motivational type of book. So I'm looking forward to that. Uh, I saw right before we, uh, we came back to the live, Someone asked, what would you advise someone going through this whole process now? Like if someone's going through it right now that we are doing the live and talking about this, like what would, you, what would be your advice to them? What would you like to tell them or inspire them? Um, because I'm different in my mindset, mm -hmm. if it was me in the situation, if it was someone else, Feel what you need to feel in that moment. If you need to cry, cry. If you want to be angry, be angry. Never neglect how you're feeling. Now, for me personally, I didn't deal with it in that sense. I was able to cope very well. But if you aren't a person that can't cope very well, um, there are resources in the hospital. Like for me, I had a doctor's order for a pastor to come see me every day. And he came with me. And he prayed and we talked about how it was feeling. Um, so they do offer spiritual leaders mm -hmm. as a resource in the hospital. You even have a, um, a psychiatrist. I personally didn't need it. So I declined the service after she came and did an evaluation. I was like, I'm not suicidal. I'm not depressed. I'm not any of those things. I don't need a psychiatrist. Um, but please, if you are going through a similar story mm -hmm. and or imputation, reach out to people, have a support. Don't feel like you're in it alone. Of course, none of my friends are amputees, but they allow me to talk to them about how I'm feeling. Now, naturally, my friends can tell you, I'm very, I rarely ever talk about, oh, I miss my fingers. It's more of, hey, um, check on me, see how I'm doing, ask me, am I okay? And I'm very transparent. Some days I'm like, you know, I'm not okay today, I feel like, I need to take a day off. I need to rest. Like I took almost a week off of social media. I don't know if you noticed. I just needed time off social media because it can be very overwhelming. I get DMs all the time and it can be overwhelming People asking for advice. And I'm like, what advice would I give? Just be yourself. Don't feel like you have to change. You are the same exact person without the limb. That's all it is. It's just the limb. If you were to wake up tomorrow without your limbs, how would you feel? I know you don't like the word strong, but uh, I feel like I probably wouldn't be that strong. But of course, I, you can't know because you're like, I'm not in the situation. And that's what I was saying today uh, with a friend, that I feel like there's nothing, it, it, there's not a situation you can be like in the middle, I feel like, oh, you're gonna be like totally depressed, like don't wanna see anyone, don't talk to anyone. Like I've heard like a lot of stories that people like decide to go down the path of being like going with alcohol or drugs and all that just to forget. Everything. So, or you go down that path or you go down the path that you have which is being inspiring people and motivating people and just seeing life like, okay, I still, you told me this. When we spoke, you said to yeah. me that, uh, yes, you do miss your limbs and all that, but 
you love that your your brain still works like a hundred percent like yeah. you were noticing things like what I didn't even notice things like, like what shoes the doctors were wearing or what watch they were wearing or the clothes and stuff like that um yeah my remember- is very high like I can even go back to a conversation last week and remember everything that happened what I had on I, I just my brain it just functions a lot better now than it did before it's very sharp and yes when I was in the ICU and even when I was in other floors in the hospital I mean you're laying in the bed majority of the day so when someone walks in my room I'm very attentive to what they're wearing and what they have on and my doctor was really surprised um, of me telling him exactly what he had on a week prior his suit his shoes his socks the bow tie everything and he was like how did you i was like i just have a very sharp mind my mind is very sharp and i'm very thankful because you know being in a coma for 15 days they were expecting me to have some form of brain damage mm. nope no brain damage um very thankful for that yes i mean it's it's amazing because you just went down that path like inspiring motivation and like doing the youtube channel that you even said to me that you want to like change it up and talk about more of motivating people and inspiring um and what what would your goals be for i won't say the next five years but like the year that we are in Like, what would you like to achieve? My goal, uh, personal goals for myself, is right now, like, I'm growing my beauty channel. Um, I'm at 610 subscribers on that channel. So, of course, my goal is to reach 1,000 before the next coming year. Um, mm-hmm. Not only that, excuse me, on that channel, I want to also incorporate more videos about amputations and what it's like being an amputee and you know motivational and inspiring videos but then my ministry channel that i just started that channel for some weird thought i believe that that channel is going to do a lot better than the beauty channel because it's going to be a platform where not only am i talking about you know god but i'm also going to be sharing like not advice but videos like one of my videos ideas that i have is why we shouldn't make excuses and i'm going to talk about what it's like being an mpt and you know a lot of the times when i see people complaining i tell them scratch your chin scratch your head scratch your nose you're welcome <laughs> it makes that, them okay what no i need a good to call you need to do it you need to put your name under that <laughs> Like, okay, scratch your nose. I can't. Like, I, I can't do what you're doing right now. So maybe you shouldn't complain. Find less reasons to complain because someone would love to be in your literal shoes. Sometimes it would be nice to just jump up out of bed and go downstairs and get some water. No, I have to put my legs on. And then I have to take my time and walk down the stairs. I have to be very uh, meticulous in how I do things. Like the way I pick up my phone or how I pick up the bottle, I can easily injure myself. So when I see people complain, it kind of like turns me off because I don't complain. I don't take time to complain. And I can't stand it when people complain. Um, Now, of course, there are times in life when we need to complain. I get it. But in your everyday life, if you're complaining too much, it's like, I don't want to deal with you. Mm. I don't even complain like that. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> no i totally much- agree with that like i notice it like i mean i will complain about things i won't put myself out of that but i try to find like less reason to complain because i feel we have so much of that and at the same time you have so many opportunities in life that you can actually do things you can like you can go and chase what you want chase your dreams chase your goals you could you can do anything you want but i feel like it's always easier to complain than actually do the work actually put the effort in because society has made it that way society makes it so that we do complain 
there are obstacles and circumstances put in the way so that we can complain. It's normal. So when I don't, it confuses people. When people see me and they actually like meet me, um, and I'll give an example, like when I'm putting up pictures on Instagram mm -hmm. and you literally can see my hands in the picture and they're like, oh, I didn't know you were an amputee. Like, huh? how did you not know? It's literally in the picture. Someone thought I photoshopped my hand. I was just like, what in the world? But people don't understand that there are people like me that are just super positive. But that I, I had been this way way before my amputation. I was able to do self affirmations in the mirror every day, building up my self confidence, building up my self esteem, um, taking time to journal. I journal often. I mean, you just saw the book. I, I journal mm -hmm. often, um, and I do like mental health checkups where. I said, okay, today is such and such. And just a week ago, I felt like this. I'm happy to report that I'm now feeling better. And these are the changes that I've made. I do things like that with myself. But, you know, I was a psychology major. So I think I have a little of an upper hand when it comes to identifying um, bad habits that you need to change. So that's just how I do it. It's easy. <laughs> you just got to do it. Like Nike, yeah. just... Yeah, <laughs> get up and stay up <laughs> um, okay so is there something else that you would like to talk about or say to oh you need to show. hopefully all right so of course i have an apple watch um and the funny thing is, I actually change my bands often. This week, I happen to be wearing black. But um, so I normally wear it on my left hand. Mm -hmm. And hopefully you guys see this, that it's in camera view. Yeah, 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 I can see it. OK. Yeah. Uh, that was like three seconds. <laughs> Yeah, I'm getting a lot better. Um, a lot better? In th that was three seconds. <laughs> remember last time? It took me like a minute. Yeah. Oh, yeah, it took you but, like a minute. That's, that's uh, terrible timing. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, my final words would be for anyone. Okay, so maybe I can give two perspectives. For someone yeah. that is not a person with a disability, Please stop making us feel like we're so special. We're normal just like everyone else. So I don't like the treatment where people try to put me on like a, pe a pedestal. Mm -hmm. I don't put myself on a pedestal. Treat me just like the next person. I don't want any special treatment. I don't want you to give handouts, um, especially if I'm not asking for it. So like if I'm out in public, now, of course, you know, I'm raised as a Southern Belle. So my dad has taught me that, you know, men open doors and men, um, you know, open your car doors and whatnot. But it's really weird when, if they're not doing that, it's always, if I drop something, they want to run up. And I'm like, I got it. I got it. I got it. I got it. Because you're making me feel more disabled right now. I got it. And it may take me a minute. Just carry on about your way. I, I got it. Because when I'm here in my room and I drop something, who has to pick it up? Me. So treat me like everyone else. Um, for people that have an amputation and or a disability, I would really, and I highly advise, if you're not someone with a similar mindset, really seek to get a therapist. Um, in the community that I'm in, you have a very high percentage of um, suicide and depression and or anxiety. And I do highly recommend that people who seek to get um, medical attention because um, it's, I'm going to say this, it's very weird, but I've gotten people sending me DMs like I would, I would have killed myself. I would have committed suicide. And I said, wow, I feel bad for you. 
I feel really bad for you if that's how you feel. That you have to tell someone else that. As if my life is meaningless because I don't have limbs. Like, what? So be very mindful of how you speak to people, um, especially someone that is an EPT. You don't understand that even though you're not directly talking about them, just making a subtle comment like that stays with a person. Mm -hmm. And then it gets on their consciousness. So just be very, you know, kind with your words. Um, asking questions about what happened, it's not your business. I don't know you, so stop asking me. If I haven't told you personally, like I shared with you exactly what happened because I chose to share it with you. If you're, I've had people literally come in my DM and like, well, I don't mean to uh, ask, but I just want to know what happened. Sometimes I just laugh because I'm like, you know what? I'm just not going to respond because my mom told me, if you don't have nothing nice to say, don't say nothing. So I don't have nothing nice to say. So I'm not going to say anything. And that's just <laughs> But please stop asking that question. I'm not going to answer you. I'm not. Because legally, if it gets out, that can kind of mess up my lawsuit. So mm -hmm. I'm very aware um, of who I tell. And of course, like all of my friends know exactly what happened. And I'm okay with them knowing. Um, but until everything is done, I probably cannot put it in a physical video. And even if I could, I probably wouldn't. Because mm -hmm. does it really matter? Yeah, Does it really matter? No, it doesn't. Whether you know or not, I'm like this now. So the, yes, for me to have to people explain. always yeah, people always like to hear the story and, and see. I, but not from sometimes it can just be too much information for a stranger because then it it takes you down a rabbit hole. Mm -hmm. And then they start asking these questions. I look, I've even had men Acts to see my limbs. How do you react to that? Out. People are very weird. People have fetishes. No, thank you. I, I just block them. Hmm. I, I don't even respond. I got in the habit of telling people, like, please, just even responding, it's like it's opening the door. So I just delete it. I block and I delete. I don't even try to engage anymore um people are very weird in that community they get off on seeing people with like lame differences it's really mm -hmm. weird disgusting um yeah remember when i did the live with jd he also said lied in my dms asking me to see my limbs people are very curious of what i look like as a person with a disability i'm like there's pictures on my page if you're that <laughs> curious, go look at the picture I'm sitting on my bed with my legs crossed. You can see my hand. You can see my leg. Why do I need to send you a picture of me? Ugh, it's just weird. That's well, just weird. Well, JD's here. Oh, yeah. Yeah, he's awesome. I talk to him a lot in the DM. Yeah, he's awesome. <laughs> and him are like a state away. Um, He's in Virginia and I'm in uh, Maryland. So literally probably like a good... 40 minute drive maybe depending on where he's at um i told him respectfully i don't do that well hey <sighs> yeah i think it's better i mean it's nice what jd does like he answers in that way but i feel then some people like will probably like keep insisting like then if you i don't see anything at all um mm -hmm. Now, I don't even open up the DMs. I see them, and I just delete them um, because I don't want it to take up too of much of my time. Mm -hmm. um, I live on social media, even though I have platforms. I try not to be on social media all the time. So when I do get like an influx of um, comments, I'm just like, oh, here we go again. I got 10 more messages. Really? Like, come on, people. Like, there's websites for that stuff. Why are you doing this to me? Please. If they're persistent, then I block them. I don't even respond. Um, but does anybody have any questions before I get off? Yes, yes. If you have any questions, please let us know. I'm not sure if anyone has seen. 
but yeah, this was fun. I was a little nervous um, at first, and I was like, ooh, because this is like my first like interview, um, and then I have an interview with Beauty Mark Community, and then I have another interview over on uh, YouTube. So it's like um, I'm attracting too much attention. I'm <laughs> too much. Oh come on, this is good. This is good. <laughs> way too much for me like I am an introvert by nature so it's like this is a little too much for me it's good it's do another think, challenge do you think that this changed you for the better define better because hmm. how to look on life in general Has this made me better? I would say personally, um, I'm a woman without kids, not married yet. Being being able to go through this, I know that I can handle anything um, because I went through something so traumatic and then it literally readjusted my entire life. Like the way I do things is totally different now. Um, even my thinking pattern. I believe that now that I have such a positive outlook, it kind of makes me more of an introvert in a sense because me being where I'm at right now, I don't like being around people that are negative. Mm. I just, it's like, it's a trigger for me. And I say that because people don't realize, even though they may be going through something, the constant negativity from that end can actually negative, negative, negatively um mess me up like with lupus you can actually um, get inflammation just from just from like negative thinking it can like mess up your body so i will say for me it is a plus now because not only am i positive it's now considered as my lifestyle so i have to do it i, could, I have to be positive if not my body is going to be like oh you're not happy today well i'm going to mess you up <laughs> and sometimes i'll Sometimes I'll get really tired and groggy. Um, so I make it apparent to really push for a positive mindset. Now it's just easy. I'm not perfect. There are days I'm just like, oh. But then I snap out of it like 15 minutes later. I'm like, girl, check your bank account. You okay? <laughs> Go buy some shoes. Go buy an <laughs> I enjoy being an amputee. Um, I'm different. I look different than other people. Um, even though I don't want to always stand out when I'm out in public. And I will say this, I don't hide my body. Like I wear shorts, I wear short sleeve. I'm not hiding under a turtleneck, a cardigan. I'm not hiding my legs under jeans. I'm excited to bring out my sundresses. Oh yeah. <laughs> oh yeah. I go for walks. Oh yeah. Um, I'm going to be getting my butt running very soon. So I'll be able to start running um, around the neighborhood. I'm excited. I'm happy to be an APT. Uh, being on this side of it, being a person that died, came back, being in hell. Like I actually went to physical hell. Uh, when you hear people say that, they're like, oh, that's not real. It's not taboo. Well, it's fine if you don't believe in it. But I know what I went through. It was very traumatic. Very traumatic. Um, out of everything that I've experienced, I would say that's the worst thing I've ever experienced in my life mm -hmm. is that spirit battle of warfare um, to the point where I actually developed like delirium. Do you know what that is? Yes. Is it yeah, I, I developed, start like hallucinating and stuff. Yeah. Um, I was getting really delirium, delirious, having delirium in the hospital where I would have like, um, spits of like confusion mm -hmm. and um, I'm actually going to be getting a therapist I'm looking to see who I can find because I'm the type of person being someone that does not like to complain I still want to have a place where I can get out my thoughts to someone um, so that is something that I'm actually going to be investing in I want to see if my insurance covers it if they don't I'll still just pay out of pocket um, because, you know, family and friends, 
aren't ex experts in amputations because there is actually um, therapy that specializes for amputees mm -hmm. um, and the battles that I'm not perfect. You know, there are days where I'm like, oh, I need somebody to talk to medically. So. No, I understand that. And uh, I do therapy, so I know that it's something that I, I feel I, anyone should do that, like everyone. Because yeah, it, yeah. It's, what you, it's what you say, like, yes, you have your friends and family that are close to you and they do want to be supportive through anything you're going in life. But it's just different because, you know, it's a safe place. You can say anything. Uh, it's, it's just different. Like... I totally try different. to really understand what, what you mean. And, and they're not they're not so personal. Um, they can actually speak from a medical perspective. I mean, I was very funny to say this. I was actually a um, therapeutic therapist in a psychiatric unit. So I did discussion groups with patients that dealt with trying to commit suicide, depression. So it's like, even me having that medical background, I even can identify everyone needs it like everyone needs it and for you to say you don't need it that's a problem yes amputation no. or not form of therapy especially the day and age that we live in thank you someone said love your mom thank yes you. it's the guy that did my makeup yes yours looks good too i'm happy your makeup I've got Tasha. Tasha is, is my expert my stylist my the best <laughs> Very nice. Uh, if any of you don't know, um, I have a YouTube channel. Of course, if you're a man, uh, I mean, you can tell your sister or your mom because <laughs> it's makeup channel. Um, but I'll put it in the comments. Yes, and also I'll put it in the description. Uh, there you go. But yeah, this was fun. Um, Yes, thank you so much for today. It was amazing. It was motivational, inspiring. You it know what's funny? Like, you're so inspiring. And I'm like, <laughs> no, I'm not. Well, you're you inspiring. are. Just take it, okay? I'm not saying you're strong because they, you don't like that word. So I will say inspiring. Sometimes it confuses me because what is the definition of inspiring? Like, Everyone has their own idea of what that means. So when people say, oh, you're so inspiring, I'm like, no, I'm not. <laughs> like, I go to the bathroom just like you. What do you mean? How is this inspiring? Okay, I have amputations. Okay. Like. I know, but it's what I, I said. You could have gone down a totally different path and we wouldn't be talking right now. Eh. <laughs> <laughs> Oh my goodness. I don't know. It's just weird. I think I just have to get used to it because, like I said, I've only been an APT. Um, just accept it. Time. Exactly. Just accept it. <laughs> That's my. That's one of my best. Ones. Yes. Take it. Take the, 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 the positive comment. Okay, Lindsay. That's my best friend. <laughs> <laughs> it's hard to accept it when you haven't. It's hard to accept it. Maybe I'll accept it like as I get older, but this is still very new. So when people tell me that I'm, and I'm gonna be very honest with you, I'm still thinking like I was before this happened. Sometimes I literally forget that I'm an APT and I'm like, oh yeah, geez, I am an APT. Like, I don't think about it until someone tells me I'm an APT because I literally, live life the same as anyone else so they have to remind me sometimes like oh you're so inspiring you're, you're an APT oh my goodness I'm like yeah I am an APT actually now that you say that I am thanks yes yeah but it's it's the way you see life so yeah that's the inspiring bit is the way you see life and you just keep going and you're like no I'm not gonna be negative I'm not, I'm just going to keep going. Yes, it would take me three hours today to do this, but then if I keep going, it's going to take me 20 minutes and it's going to take me three seconds to put my watch on. When I put on jeans, you know, I zip my pants and I put my, um, you know, I button them up. For the average person, how long do you think it takes for you to put on jeans? Like roughly. 
60 seconds, a minute. <clears throat> yeah. So it takes me about 15 to 20 minutes. And to you, you're like, oh my goodness. Imagine, I'm like, okay, you got this. Zip it up. Okay, you're almost there. You're almost there. So I'm literally like, saying that to myself like you almost got it i'm literally in here like did it? yes it's like a big accomplishment because it's like i did it myself no one's helping me or watching me but i did it so someone with my mindset it's like it's different because you're on the outside but if you were literally in my shoes i think you would probably see it the same way like yeah um i put on my shirt it probably takes me like two minutes but i put it on so that's just how the cookie crumbles. And <laughs> I will say this and I'll be done. The reason why I am so against being negative is because it's not beneficial. Who wants to be around someone that's negative? No one. Who wants to talk to someone that's always negative? No one. What is being negative gonna do for your life? What is that going to do for you? Mm -hmm. Only but make you depressed. I don't have time. I have too much life to live. I'm still 29. Why am I going to be in bed all day? Like, oh, I feel so bad for myself. Like, I lost my fingers. What? You want to see me put on a watch? Like, forget that. I'm literally in my room. Like, okay, what else can I do that I probably haven't done yet? I've literally probably much did everything that I can think of. I put my shoes on. Sometimes I tie my shoelaces. Sometimes I don't. Even my feminine products. I will say this because some people probably are wondering. Yes, I still have a period. Yes, I still am able to put on pads. I'm probably gonna have to do a video on that because <laughs> a question like, well, how do you how do you deal with yourself at that time of the month? I'm like, what do you do when you go to the bathroom? I do the same thing. Just, just use your imagination. You know, like, <laughs> you put the toilet paper around your hand. Like, what do you mean? You go like this and you cut the, you know how you get the tissue and you rip it off? I'm able to rip it off. I take the other hand and just, hi-ya, like, fruit. <laughs> you know, people are just weird when they ask questions. People are weird. I'm sorry. I, I just I don't think they are weird. I mean, I get the weird at some I, parts. I just feel like some people just ask questions that they just should not be asking. Yes, that I will agree. It's just like, why are you asking me that? Really? I mean, the questions that I get sometimes it's just like I'm not answering that. I just I say thank you for asking, but no, thank you. Because oh. there are just some things that are just too personal, and it's just like no. But of course, you know, with periods and stuff, that's something that everyone typically deals with. It's the same thing as anyone else that goes to the bathroom. I, my mom doesn't take care of me. Come on, come on. Now, when I was in the hospital, because of all the medication that they had me on, I did not have a period. And that was lovely. <laughs> not a <laughs> period. Oh, my God. I bet oh. Amazing. But when I got home, I had two periods in one month because my body was trying to catch up. And I was like, oh, no, that's disrespectful. <laughs> How could you do that? But it's good now. It's good now. But I love being an amputee. Thank you all for being here with me. Um, I'm happy to be a part of this community. I'm very thankful for you, even though you don't have a limb difference, that you've created a platform for us to be able to, you know, talk about the advantages and disadvantages Hopefully, I can do a updated interview when I, you know, start diving again. Um, that's gonna be awesome. I'm really yes, I can't wait. That. You promised me this. <laughs> no, I seriously promise I'll do that. And um, probably um, an update on like my moving situation. Um, you know what's funny? I actually did a Snapchat of me making my bed, and the comments I was getting was like that emoji. Yeah, <laughs> it was just. I literally flipped my mattress because I flip my mattress every so often. Um, I flipped my mattress and it was just like, how in the world? I was like, y'all don't know I was an athlete, right? I'm very strong. 
I might be 410 and 130, but I'm strong. Okay. Oh, okay. Queen size mattress, put the, the sheets and everything on. Don't feel bad for me. I'm happy. I'm good to go. Um, yeah, this was fun. Very fun. Yes, I, I enjoyed it so much. And I hope we helped someone that has like educate people i already told you like that was the goal of getting people educated with things and yeah start educating more people on what it's like being an mpt but from a woman's perspective as well mm -hmm. um because i see a lot of men that are mpts but it's like you're not a woman you don't deal with the bodily changes that us women go through like even learning to put on a bra <laughs> You forgot that part. <laughs> Good gracious. I mean, can you imagine someone like sweating? And I'm like, how am I sweating? When you lose your limbs, you sweat a lot because, um, what is it called? I forgot what it's called, but it's like your fingers and toes are able to, <clears throat> the, the, their energy, the skin or hormonal things they can exit through your fingers and toes and when you're amputated that body heat has nowhere else to go so it builds up so i get really hot um so i have like a miniature fan um that i that i have and i just fan myself down a lot because that's one disadvantage um it's getting like hot really quick i could walk down the stairs and i'm like feeling like i just did a 30 minute workout so that's the only disadvantage. Thank you so much. What time is it? To, it now it's uh, almost nine. Nine p.m. Yeah, it's almost nine. It's in twenty minutes. Okay. Well, <laughs> this was lovely. It was. Thank you so hey, much for giving us your positivity. Yes. And all of the people that follow me on Instagram, please go follow her page. Um, she is amazing. She's really creating a platform for people with disabilities. Even if, and I'm learning this, even if you don't have a physical disability, it can be a mental disability um, exactly. or a disability that you, like my vocal cord is actually a form of a disability. Um, so I hope you all go follow her and also follow her YouTube channel. Can you shout out your YouTube channel really quick? Yes. Well, actually, I have two of them, but... Uh... Oh, you, people on my page are looking at oh, you right now. The people from my um, Instagram are watching you right now as well. Oh, thank you so much. They need, I've got, I have the, the link in the description. And okay. I, will put, I will put your YouTube channel in the description once I upload the live. So once I turn it off, I will write it down there so people can go follow you. And also they will see your Instagram page when we uh, uh, turn it off. Um, so yeah, thank you so much for today. I really appreciate it. It was amazing. I enjoyed it so much. I enjoyed how positive you are. <laughs> I hope I answered all the questions that you had. Yes, and as we said, we're going to have a part two soon. So there will be more questions to ask whoever wants. But yes, stay away from negativity. That's that's yes. what we, we took from today. <laughs> 2021. <laughs> Thank you so much. Have a lovely Thank day. Have an amazing night. <laughs> Bye. Bye.